Hello everyone, Calamity here, or at least a very convincing Hydro Eidolon. Today's video is going to be all about our favorite dancer, Nilo. Nilo is a very uniquely designed character because of the fact that she can only be used for one single team type, Bloom. Not only that, but she can only be used with Hydro and Dendro units. Now, of course, as I say this, I'm sure someone's going to be like, well, actually, I've used Nilo in a Freeze team before. Or I've used Nilo in a Vaporize team before. And I'm sure you could just do that just fine. But for all intents and purposes, we're going to talk about how to build Nilo in the way that she was designed to be used for, which is for Bloom teams. We're going to go everything you need to know from her weapons to her artifacts to her best teammates. And of course, we're going to do a combat showcase at the very end. We have a lot to go over, so let's get started with the talents. The first talent we have is a normal attack talent called Dance of the Samser. Uh, this is a very standard normal attack talent, no fancy gimmicks here or mechanics. And if we can look at the skill attributes, just a three hit combo, charge attack, plunge damage, all the basic works there. So let's move on to the elemental skill, which is called Dance of the Half Car Savar. I don't know how to pronounce that, I'm sorry. Uh, the, her elemental skill has a lot of text going on here. This is a lot. Uh, we're gonna just condense this and shorten it up for you. Of course, you can always just read it uh, by pausing the vid or just read it in the game. Nilo will basically, you basically tap the skill button and Nilo will enter what's called the pirouette state. From this state, you can either choose to do normal attacks, i.e. just left click on PC or whatever it is on controller, or you tap the elemental skill button and Nilo will do a series of different attacks depending on what you press. Now this is important to know because if Nilo is going to be the driver, quote unquote, on this team, basically the person that's doing the bloom reactions, then you want Nilo to do what's called the whirling step stance. That's when you tap the elemental skill button. But if she's not the driver, then we want her to do the sword dance dance instead and i should have gameplay showing up over nilo's face here and you can see the differences between the two dances and there's one more last thing to note here is that you cannot do charge attacks while under the pirouette or the lunar prayer uh state so let's look at the uh, skill attributes so we can see that all of the damage that nilo does in her elemental skill is based off her hp and then we can see the different durations here we have the pirouette duration the lunar prayer duration and the tranquility aura duration and it does have quite a long cooldown of 18 seconds but let's move on to the elemental burst which has quite a long name here Let's just call it the Distant Dreams Listening Spring. Uh, this is going to be much easier to explain than the uh, than the skill. It's, it's very easy and we like that. So Nilo's going to do a dance and then she'll initially do AoE Hydro Damage. And then after a bit of time, she will once again do another bit of Hydro Damage. So let's take a look at the skill attributes. Uh, we can see the initial skill damage and the lingering Aeon damage are both, once again, based off her max HP. So it also tell us, tells us if we want to increase the personal damage of Nilo, get that HP. Um, it does have an energy cost of 70 and a cooldown of 18 seconds. And then we can also you know, take note that the lingering Aeon damage does scale uh, much higher than the initial skill damage. Now, another thing that makes Nilo very unique than other characters when it comes to building her is that her talent levels actually are not as important as you would think. When you're first building Nilo, her talent priorities are all low because upgrading her skill and upgrading her burst will increase her personal damage. But because our objective with this team is to do as much bloom damage as possible, upgrading her skill and or her burst actually doesn't increase the bloom damage at all. So you technically don't have to, but for her own personal damage, you can get her skill and her burst up to level 8. Now let's actually get into what makes Nilo unique and what makes her much, much more different than your typical Hydro character. And we're going to start with Court of the Dancing Petals. Now just like the skill you can see on the left here, this has quite a lot of text. So once again, we're going to condense that down for you and give you the short version. So first of all, this talent can only be used when you have Dendro or Hydro characters on the team. That's part one. Part two, to activate this talent, you need to do one of her dances from her skill. So either the 
sword dance or the whirling steps dance. You need to do either one of those. It doesn't matter which one. Once you do that, you're going to get what's called the golden chalice's bounty for 30 seconds. This buff is going to increase your elemental mastery of all nearby characters by 100, which is actually a really nice buff. And it's going to help for the bloom damage, of course. Now here is the important part. Well, the most important part, I should say. This whole skill is important, but here's the most important part. She's going to transform the regular Dendro cores into what is called a Bountiful Core. These look like Dendro cores for the most part, but they, they have like a different shape and also different effects, which are listed in the skill description. Bountiful cores do more damage, and they also have a larger AoE. They also will explode very quickly, but this doesn't really matter because as a Bloom team, you should be triggering Bloom, you know, all the time. So you shouldn't just be like sitting there waiting for your blooms to explode. Anyways, you should be creating more bountiful cores and then the previous ones are exploding as you spawn in more. And then the last bit here is to let you know that you cannot do some sort of hyper bloom or Burgian uh, sort of reaction with these special bountiful cores. So this is also a good and a bad thing because it means that your enemies can't steal your dendro cores or I should say your bountiful, bountiful cores in case you're like fighting an electro enemy or a pyro enemy and they set off your cores. That would be super annoying. So that can't happen. You can only do bloom damage with the bountiful core. And I should have shown you gameplay of what a regular dendro core is and then what a bountiful core looks like. And then yeah, the final final bit on this skill is that once you... Do not If you do not meet any of the requirements for the Golden Chalice effect, it's going to basically cancel, as I said before. So yeah, this is a very long and complex Ascension passive, probably one of the most unique ones in the game. But this is also what makes Nilo very unique, and that's why her team building is very, very limited. You can only use Hydro or Dendro characters when building a team around her. At least if you want to take advantage of her Bloom bountiful cores now let's move on to the next ascension talent which isn't as complicated as the previous one hang in there um this one is much more simpler every 1000 hp that neil has above 30,000 hp is going to increase that chalice's bounty damage by nine percent and this has a cap of 400 percent so once you reach 30,000, every subsequent 1,000 HP after that is going to give you 9% more damage. So, you know, 10,000 more HP, i.e. you have 40,000 HP, means that your Chalice Bounty Cores are doing 90% more damage. So if you did 50,000, then it's 180, 60,000, then it's uh, 270. So if you want to reach the cap, which is 400%, you would need a, a, a HP of around like 74,000. 1000 HP and maybe some change uh, to reach that max damage increase. But as a free to play player or even a low spender, the chances of you reaching this cap are not that high because you definitely need her signature weapon to do this and some really good HP percentage rolls on your artifacts. Now let's move on to her final talent, which is called the White Jade Lotus. This is just a cooking talent where you're going to have a chance to gain double the product when you're making food with adventure related effects that's very vague um on what that means but there's usually an icon when you're cooking uh when you choose who's cooking the the meal to show you if they have a chance to double it Whew, that was a long description for her uh talents now let's talk about nilo's weapon options now the best weapon that you can get for nilo of course is going to be her signature weapon now, I am a low spender on this game, so I do not have a key of the Kajnizit. If you do, best weapon because it has a substat of HP percentage, gives you a ton of HP from that, as well as the weapon's effect also giving you damage. And the secondary effect of this key sword is that it will convert your HP, a portion of it, into elemental mastery. And this is a really, really good weapon if you want your Nilo to be the one that's triggering the Bloom reactions. She's going to have a lot of elemental mastery from it. Now, if you're not in whale territory or spending territory and you're down here with me and free to play and stuff like that, 
then you're going to want to look at some 4-star options. Uh, speaking of 4-star options, we're going to talk about the Ziphos Moonlight, which is going to be one of the best 4-star weapons available to her. It's going to give her a bunch of elemental mastery, which is okay. And then the second part of the effect is that it will convert that elemental mastery into a team-wide buff of energy recharge to your entire team. So while Nilo isn't a character that needs her, you know, to constantly cast her burst off cooldown, I'm sure someone on your team could benefit from just the extra energy recharge and it's always good to have. Other weapons you can give Nilo are an Iron Sting. This is a free-to-play craftable weapon. You can craft it as early as Mondstadt. It gives you a bunch of elemental mastery as well as increasing your elemental skill damage. It's just a basic weapon that gives you elemental mastery and we kind of want to give Nilo... It's not a bad thing to give her some since she might be triggering... Uh, blooms regardless of what weapon you give her. You can always give her the Favonia Sword if you want Nilo to be have a little bit more utility and just give a little bit more energy to her team if you don't have a Ziphos Moonlight. This is also going to be a decent option here. Let's talk about artifacts for Nilo and it's actually going to be really easy to build your Nilo in terms of just finding good artifact pieces and the substats. So the best thing you can give Nilo is going to be a two-piece Tenacity of the Millilith set and then a two-piece Vorukasha's Glow. These both give you 20% HP, as you can see right above my head, giving you a grand total of 40% HP, which is fantastic for Nilo's damage, as well as for that Bloom uh, Bountiful Core damage. Now, if you're looking for other artifact set options, you could give her like a two, like a mixture of the two-piece effect uh, artifact set. So it could be two-piece HP percentage, Maybe you don't have access to Vorokasha's Glow yet, that's okay. Then you can give her something like maybe like a two-piece Elemental Mastery set from Wanderer's Troop, or a two-piece Hydro Damage bonus from the Heart of Depths, or Noblesse Oblige two-piece, just something, something minor, or even two-piece two um, Emblem of Severed Fate for some energy recharge. Uh, in the meantime but you definitely want to try to get this combo of artifact sets on your nilo as it is going to be the most beneficial to her uh, another set that you could give her and i actually have one of the pieces on her as it was a filler piece um, is going to be a deep wood memory set this is a set that will decrease your opponent's dendro resistance by 30 percent when your skill or burst hits an opponent but you know, in most cases, someone else on your team, usually like another Dendro unit like Mahita or Dendro Traveler or Yao Yao or, you know, just like somebody else usually uh, it already has this set equipped and built for them. So chances are you don't have to build it on another character that does not stack. But just on the off chance that you don't have someone using this set, definitely worth putting it on somebody. All right, now that you've settled on a artifact set for your Nilo, what kind of artifact subsets are we looking for? And the answer is really quite easy. We're going to be looking for HP percentage first and foremost. That's going to be the best subset you can find. Then flat HP um, to follow that up. Now the rest of the stats is mainly up to your preference, but just try to fill it up with uh, you know whatever you can get. Um, energy recharge being an okay subset because of you know more burst uptime but again as i said before nilo isn't a character where it's like you have to have that burst up and ready to go every rotation if you don't have it that's actually fine you just want to you can just use her skill uh, and then just move on to the next character from there but having the burst does have a bit more damage added to your rotation uh, another stat you, that you could look for is elemental mastery um, this is a great stat if you want to make Nilo sort of the driver or the person triggering Bloom reactions. Elemental Mastery is going to help boost that damage. Now when it comes to the Sands, the Goblet, and the Circlet, this is going to be really easy, but you're going to want HP Percentage um, on as your main stat on all three. It's very easy to build and very easy to go for. You can see my Sands here. It kind of went to Defense Percentage a little too much for my liking, but... Um, you just try to get some flat HP, some energy recharge. If you get Elemental Master, that's good too. Um, the Goblet, also HP percentage here. Uh, you don't have to go for Hydro Damage bonus. Again, HP percentage is what we want. Same, And the subsets are all the same. Circlet, again, HP percentage, and that's pretty much it. Very easy to build when it comes to the artifacts. Just, just remember HP percentage is what you're looking for all the time.
All right, we're going to talk about some whale territory here as we go over Nilo's constellations. But as with most five-star characters, you know, I try to say this in every guide, but you, you do not have to invest in your Nilo's uh, constellations. She is much, she's definitely capable of doing all of the game's content, including Spiral Abyss, at the comfort of C0. This is going to make your elemental skill do increased damage depending on which dance you do, or if it's going to be the Whirling Steps dance, it will be extended by an extra six seconds um the illusionary or the luminous illusion damage um on the d sword dance um part of her skill again we're not really using milo's elemental skill for the damage that it does like it's nice to have sure but it's not where her damage comes from her damage comes from those bountiful cores as we mentioned before so it's not really beneficial here in a big way for us um, and then the Tranquility Aura duration lasting for an additional 6 seconds, that is actually going to be a pretty good buff to Nilo if she is the one triggering Bloom reactions on the team. So let's uh, move on to C2, which is called the Starry Skies, Their Flowers Rain. After the characters affected by the Golden Chal Chalice's bounty deal Hydro Damage and Dendro Damage, the resistance of your opponents will be reduced by 35%. For both hydro and dendro this is going to be a lot of damage because that's exactly what bloom is bloom is a combination of hydro damage and dendro damage so if your opponents are losing uh 35 resistance to both hydro and dendro damage that is going to be a big damage increase uh, overall um and of course if you are using the deep wood memory set then they also have an additional 30% dendro resistance shred, so your opponents are going to lose 65% dendro res. That's going to be big, big damage for you. This is a very good constellation right here. C3 and C5 are going to increase your burst and skill respectively. Again, not to sound like a broken record, but Nilo's personal damage is not what we're using her for. It's the dendro core, or her bountiful core damage. So, so let's move on to C4, which is called uh, Fricative Pulse. After your third dance step in the elemental skill, doesn't matter which dance you do, Nilo will gain 15 elemental energy and the damage from the, uh, the Distant Dreams Listening Spring will be increased by 50% for 8 seconds. So you get even less energy recharge requirements, which is, that's a, you know, a welcome change for Nilo. And then her burst just straight up gets 50% uh, increased damage, which is, again, nice, but I've already said why that's not, like, the best thing ever uh, for Nilo. Then we get to her C6, which is Frostbreaker's Melody. For every 1,000 points above, um, for, excuse me, for every 1,000 points of max HP, Nilo's crit rate and crit damage will increase by 0.6 and 1.2, respectively. You can only get 30% crit rate and 60% crit damage from this method. If we start adding up all those buffs to her elemental skill damage, her burst damage, those extra skills that she's getting from these constellations, and of course we've built Nilo to have tons and tons of HP, now her own personal damage is going to start getting amplified from this free crit rate and crit damage. So all of a sudden Nilo is going to start becoming her her own DPS without the Bountiful cores. Her personal damage does start getting pretty high and pretty noticeable and, and does start actually mattering to the point where you should level up her, her talents. But this is only once you get to C6 and this is definitely a whale's territory kind of thing. So it's not needed. As you can see, a lot of the constellations except for her C2 don't really increase your bloom damage um, all that much. And if you were to go for a constellation, my recommendation would just be to go for C2 and then call it there. Okay, let's talk about teammates for Nilo. And that's right, I said teammates, not team setups. And that is because, once again, Nilo cannot be used with other elements outside of Dendro and Hydro if you want to use her Bountiful cores. Now, your team does not have to be exactly what I have here. Um, in fact, I do a lot of my dailies and exploration with Nilo. So I have Yolan in here just because of her elemental skill to get around faster. But you definitely don't have to have a Yolan. That being said, who do you want on the team? So one of the biggest downsides to Nilo's team is that she doesn't really have a dedicated character that can help with grouping, right? Because we can't use Animo, we can't use Kazuha, we can't use Venti to help group up our Dendro cores and to help group up enemies for us. Um, 
One of the best Dendro characters you can have for this is Mihita because her elemental skill can apply to all enemies. She's sort of like a pseudo grouper, right? She can help. She doesn't bring your enemies together, but she can make it so that your enemies all take damage simultaneously without being grouped up. But, you know, to be fair, Mihita is such a broken character and OP character that you could recommend her in anything that has to do with Dendro, right? So, if you don't have Nihita, Dendro Traveler is also a good option. Kali is a free unit that I can recommend for free-to-play players. You also have new characters now like Kirara if you were able to pull her in the previous banner. We also have Kava um, as well from the previous banner if you were able to pull for him. You can use him with Nilo. We have Baiju, who can provide healing and shielding if you don't want to use Yao Yao or have Kirara's shields. For Hydra options, you can also use Jing Cho instead of the Elan. You can see I, re I replaced her uh, to be a bit more free to play friendly here. Uh, Kakomi was regarded as one of the best healers to have in a team like this because the biggest danger of running a Nilo team is not the enemies that you're going against, it's your own bloom damage because bloom damage damages your characters. It damages yourself when those dendro cores go off and since, well, back in the day there wasn't a dendro shielder, um, one of the best choices you could use was a Kokomi uh, to, keep, to keep your team healthy and alive. Um, another character you could use for that is Barbara if you don't have a Kokomi or uh, on the Dendro side, you could use Yao Yao for a healer as well. Welcome to the combat showcase uh, for Nilo's guide here. We are using the Spiral Abyss as a sort of showcase area just because, you know, it is the hardest content in the game. We are on floor 12. Um, but we're only going to do the first chamber because doing, you know, Jade Plume Terror Shroom with a team like this is honestly kind of annoying um, without an Electro unit. And doing the whole Spiral Abyss is going to take too much time. So we're just going to do chamber one. I'm going to let Editing Panda do a post-recording uh, post, uh, voiceover because I tried recording this earlier and it's really hard for me to play and talk or explain what I'm doing uh, in lifetime. So I'm just going to go ahead and start and uh, have fun explaining it post-Panda. Thanks, past Panda. It's weird to say. So I always run to the back of the arena here so that I can quickly group up the Whopper Flowers. Now we're applying a bunch of high, uh, Dendro thanks to Nahida and Dendro Traveler. I quickly use Nilo's Burst and use a quick sword dance with her elemental skill so that we can get those bountiful cores. Then I use Barbara's elemental skill to apply Hydro. Rinse and repeat for the second wave of Whopper Flowers here, but I kind of messed up on the grouping as we can see that the Cryo Flower kind of uh, dug in kind of late and I didn't get to apply Dendro to it. So this part right here is a big mistake on my end and we definitely could have cleared this chamber at least. This is losing me so much time. I probably could have cleared this at least 10, 15, maybe even 20 seconds faster. But regardless, the damage is still good. As you can see, we clear out the rest of the Whopper Flowers. Next up are the three Dorito Bots. And the process is pretty much the same. We apply the Dendro thanks to Nahida and Traveler. Then we use, um, we use Nilo's Burst if it's up, just for the Hydro application. Then quickly use her uh, ele elemental skill again. We just use the Sword Dance because we don't want Nilo, at least my version of Nilo, I don't want her triggering the Bloom reactions. We want uh, Barbara is the one that's built for elemental mastery, or I could use Nahida uh, to trigger Blooms for the most damage. And then as you can see, same process, and we basically obliterated Rito bots really, really fast. I'll send you guys over back to past Panda now. All right, I hope hopefully future Panda that's, you know, done with the recording of this did a good job of explaining what was going on during that fight. And I'm pretty sure he said this already, but, you know, I did not do that fight all optimally. I'm sorry, Nilo mains that checked out this video for some reason. That fight definitely we could have saved at least another 10 to 15 seconds, even possibly more. It, it, with the Whopper Flower grouping and, and some of the mistakes I did uh, when fighting the Dorito bots. That being said, um, I just wanted to point out that Nilo was a character that wasn't... I wouldn't say she was too popular on her initial release and that was because of the Dendro Hydro restriction. Because keep in mind when Nilo was first released we didn't have a lot of Dendro characters that we do have uh, you know, available today. The only characters we had were Kali, Tignari, Traveler, Dendro, and Nihita wasn't even released yet, she was going to be the banner after. So we only had three 
Dendro characters, with two of them being able to be used with Nilo. Tignori is not a character you want to use with Nilo. But nowadays we have Kirara, we have Baiju, we have Yaoya, we have Nahida, um, as well as the other um, Dendro characters like Kava. So Nilo these days has a lot of options to work with when it comes to building a team around her. I do think she's much more accessible even for you know free-to-play players. Since she doesn't need her constellations, she can get by with a 4-star weapon um, and just very very easy to play lots of damage uh even though on paper it looks like all of her skills have these long descriptions and, and can be kind of daunting she's really not and again probably one of the biggest weaknesses that this team has is you definitely need to have a strong healer that can keep your team alive you can see that even my barbara was struggling a bit to keep the team alive towards the end there once we were going ham on the blooms on those dorito bots so a very strong healer is recommended or a strong shielder of course if you have a shielder like kirara baiju or baiju who can do both then you are gonna be just fine and with that being said that is gonna be the end of the guide hopefully the next time y'all see nilo around uh being reran in the banner maybe this guy will help you want to pull for her or for those of you that have just had your Nila but haven't built her yet. So if you have any questions on building her or anything that you think I forgot to mention in the video, please do so uh, in the comments. Um, also, don't forget to leave a like and or subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content. I do plan to be making more uh, character guides for Genshin Impact as well as Honkai Star Rail once I can get around to it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.